Sam, how does the psychosexuality of female narcissists differ from male narcissists? Well, for one thing, I like the psychosexuality of female narcissists, and mm -hmm. I don't like the psychosexuality of male narcissists. Mm -hmm. And that makes all the difference in the world to female narcissists. I hope. <laughs> <laughs> the more, the merrier. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's the devil in me. <laughs> um, it doesn't. That's the short and the long of it. There is a, a, a huge misunderstanding about gender. And I've just released a video about this. This is my latest video on my channel. is about genders, gender in diagnosis. Gender impacts the manifestations of the disorder. Gender, gender impacts behavioral choices. So, for example, women are far more likely to act narcissistically in family settings. And men are far more likely to act narcissistically in the workplace or in sports and so on. That's one example. Women are far more likely to be narcissistically histrionic. In other words, to place an emphasis on their bodies, to leverage their bodies, to obtain supply. In other words, they're far more likely to be somatic. Men are actually far more likely to be cerebral. They are far more likely to emphasize ambition, competition, education, um, intellectual accomplishments, work accomplishments, money, and so on and so forth. So they are far more likely to emphasize things which are not related to the human body, and women are far more likely to emphasize things related to their bodies in the pursuit of narcissistic supply. But the disorder is identical. Psychodynamics is the same. That's why the language in the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual, in the International Classification of Diseases, the language is gender neutral. You don't have the language that says he, she. No, it's gender neutral. It's gender neutral because the disorder is indistinguishable between men and women. But of course, societal rules, cultural mores, legal constraints, other issues determine where the disease will erupt, how it will express and manifest. It reminds me very much of genetics. We have numerous genes, but not all of us uh, are the same. Although we share 99 point, many, many nines, the same genes. Why is that? Because the environment determines how many of our genes are expressed. The environment activates specific genes. And then, by the way, some of these traits can be passed on to future generations, which is known as epigenetic uh, transmission. So con think of narcissism as a genetic load, as a gene or chromosome. And then the environment triggers it. And the environment triggers it, and then it manifests. Of course, if you're a woman, even today, emancipated, liberated, empowered, money-making women are still very much bound to traditional gender roles. Ultimately, after an age of promiscuity and what, what, what have you, they want a family. Women want families much more than men. Statistics, I'm sorry. So this is a traditional gender role. And of course, she will express her narcissism in very different ways. She will try to attract a man. So women place a huge emphasis on being sluts. You have slight slut walks, you know, being attractive. Um, being attractive is crucial to women. We know that because body image problems and body dysmorphic disorders are exponentially more common among women than among men, for example. Okay, I hope you understood what I said because is I that, have no idea what I said. <laughs> is, that, is that because these are successful strategies? Do, do women choose somatic narcissism and emphasis on their bodies because that has more power over men and do men choose the cerebral route because it's just more powerful in attracting women than emphasizing your body. Is that, I'm asking, I suppose, is it from the outside in or the inside out? Are, are they doing it as a response to the environment just, be, just because it's successful? It's utterly environmental. Okay. We know, for example, there are studies dating back to 1910 mm. and 1924. The studies of, of um, societies, tribes and so on, where women have male roles, even their bodies change. And they mm. become very masculine bodies. Mm. 
a lot of what we think is embedded in biology is utterly societal, cultural, and environmental. Mm. A lot. And that includes big parts of what we think is, is, is typical female body. Mm. This is total nonsense. So there are secondary sex um, characteristics of bodies, of course. Women have larger breasts, I hope, and so on and so forth. But the truth is that gender, masculinity, and femininity are indeed performative social constructs to a very large extent. They are not, not determined much by biology. They are determined by social roles. And so, yes, the gender, the traditional gender role coupled with sexual scripts and social scripts says that a woman is not self-actualized until she has had a family and, and children. Now, not all women adhere to this, of course. Even 100 years ago, not all women adhered to this. We had the concept of the spinster or the old maid who did not get married, and did not have children. But it's still, it's still in the cultural code, in the cultural DNA. And it, it takes a hell of a lot more than 100 years to get rid of this. Mm. I, I mean, women think that they have changed in 100 years. They're no longer their grandmothers and, and mothers, but they are. Of course they are. Why? Yes. It's a successful strategy, survival strategy. Has been for thousands of years, and it's difficult to get rid of in a hundred years. As economic power shifts, these traditional roles will change. And in a few generations, I think two or three hundred years, we're going to have a truly new woman and a truly new man. I'm not sure it's such a positive thing, but it's going to happen for sure. Pathologies, just to finish this, pathologies manifest socially and culturally. This is the irony, with the, with the exception of schizophrenia, and even, even in schizophrenia is not true. All mental health pathologies are there, and then society tells the mentally ill person how he should act mentally ill. Mental illness is a role play, role play is a role model, exactly like being a man or being a woman. You know, when you're, when you're born, Society, through your parents and teachers, tells you how to be a man. And then, if you're a girl, they tell you how to be a woman. It's the same with a mentally ill person. Society tells you what is the socially acceptable way of being a narcissist. It dictates you. I 100% I, I agree. I've actually come to the, and more recently, um, to the conclusion that a lot of therapy, one of the things that makes therapy a blunt instrument, when it doesn't work, because very often it doesn't, is actually because we're trapped in roles. We're trapped in role play. The therapist can only say and do so much, and the client is responding and acting out in ways that they're, they're not consciously aware of, but that they've absorbed of what they think a person with their condition would and, and should say. This is going to be... Uh, uh, some people find that controversial, but I think it's actually very, very significant. And the cutting edge of psychotherapy must unpack that must unpack that because there is so much cultural loading when you walk into the the therapist office that it makes real authentic change very very difficult and quite rare i i would i would conjecture psychotherapy is a tool of social control it's <laughs> the very definition of the of the aim of psychotherapy the aim of psychotherapy is to make you socially productive to make yeah. you happy but also to make you functional. Yeah. What does it mean functional? It means satisfying societal expectations and roles. Yes. Otherwise, you're not functional. They, these are agents of, of prolonged, extended socialization and social control, absolutely. I, I know that, that this, is, this, is a, this is a whole uh, side topic, but ju just to help people who, who aren't familiar with this concept understand it, if you're sat there thinking, how could this be true, that schizophrenics are role-playing or narcissists, or, well, that's, that's nonsense. Try and think of it this way. Think of any mental health issue or personality disorder and then try to divide it to a nuance from the culture in which it is defined. It's impossible. It's it impossible. Is. Japanese narcissists, Japanese narcissists express the narcissism through the collective. Right. A Japanese who works in Toyota is not going to say, I'm a genius. Yeah. He's never going to say this. He's going to say, I work for the greatest company on earth. That's his grandiosity. Right. That's his narcissism, that he works for the greatest company on earth. So, because Japan is a collectivist society, 
the allowed method, the allowed way to express narcissism is through the collective, <laughs> mm. for example. Mm. Yeah, it's, uh, I, I, fi I find this whole area absolutely fascinating because I, th I think this is where the real breakthroughs could come from. You know, you do childhood trauma to a certain degree, and then I think you've got to say, okay, we need to look at culture and expectation and, and beliefs. Um, Consider, for example, incest. It is society that communicates to the incest victim mm. that something is wrong. Yeah. Had society not been there, many, many incest victims would not have grasped it as a, as a bad experience, a horrible experience. Or... Mm. Now, in some cases, of course, there's violence involved, and I'm not talking about this. Mm. But when it's consensual, when it's so-called loving or caring or whatever, the child has a, a, a difficult time to tell that something is wrong until society communicates to him via the social worker and the police who is arresting his father, her yeah. father, society is sending him signals that something is wrong. Yes. So society is super crucial. And that's why I am strongly opposed to the concepts of self and individual. I think they're nonsensical and counterfactual. Yeah. yeah. Okay, but we are monopolizing the conversation. Yes. We yes. find each other much more fascinating than... <laughs> <laughs> this, pure, this is narcissism in action. <laughs> narcissism in action. It's not good.